you never want to build up against brick veneer. Brick veneer was not intended to have two, three, four feet of dirt built up on it. The basement wall, that's different. But once you see the brick, now you know you're at the point of the sill plate. And brick veneer is, it's no different than vinyl siding or aluminum siding. It's just vertically stacked brick with mortar. There's no strength to it. It was not designed to put all this weight up against it. And then once that soil loads with water, hydrostatic pressures put more force against it. So this is a walkout basement layout and due to the lot being too low and having water problems, years ago, 20 years ago, dirt was piled up and beautiful landscape was put in to make it all look part of the plan. The problem was this was a liability and it could end up in a really big insurance claim when the brick veneer caves in and the back of the house collapses. So I'm a part of a lot of those insurance claims. They usually reach out to us because not only do they need a bunch of other trades to reassemble all the damage done to the house, but they want somebody to come in there that knows how to do it right so it doesn't happen again. So we're removing all this dirt. We're removing all the weight up against the brick veneer. And we are going to retain all that dirt. We still want to keep the elevation. We still want to shed the water away from the house. The only way to do that is to build up a really strong retaining wall and actually have an air gap between the brick veneer and our retaining wall. And then we'll do our burrito wrapped system right along the footer, which you know I'm looking forward to showing you guys that. The excavation process is tedious. Our small equipment is surgical for this very reason. We're trying to disassemble the least amount of this yard as possible. This is a lot of work. This is a big job. I always get asked in the comments section, how much does something like that cost? And I'm not, I, I'm not even gonna hesitate to tell you, something like this, you're looking at about $40,000. Labor, haul out, and we like the Keystone block Fent distributes it here in Michigan, but the Keystone block is 86 pounds a block and you use fiberglass pins to hold it together. This block doesn't go anywhere. You fill the center of it with drainage stone, you fill behind the wall with drainage stone. So we've been working on this project for days. I actually have to show this in two parts. So we're going to show you the excavation in this and the beginning of the wall assembly and the part two that will follow. The part two that will follow, that will be in a couple of weeks. We'll get that out to you. So you can just see how close you are to the house, how careful you have to be as an operator to not hit the home Francisco's in this excavator every day, so he's the guy you want. This is just, for him, he's at home in this machine. It's an extension of his body at this point. But he gets up in that corner so tight, and there's just so much, there's like two, three inches of room. I mean, there's there's nothing there for, no no room for mistake is what I'm trying to say. So his tracks, you might notice, they're very close together on that Kubota uh, backhoe that's swinging the dirt there. Look at how close those tracks are. So this machine has hydraulic. These tracks will go in very, very narrow so you can get into tight areas. So we have two mini ditch witches running the fill out of here. We pulled probably about 60 yards of dirt out of here. This was this was one of the bigger jobs. And you can just see how high up on the house it had to be 
to take care of the water problem. This home was built in a rural area, it wasn't built in a subdivision, and the lot was lower than what the homeowner had you know, first thought. So in a perfect world, the house would have been a few feet higher in build. And honestly, in truth, everything would have been fine if the walkout didn't, if there was no walkout here, and it was just basement wall and then backfilled, everything would have been fine. I see too many homes with walkouts that are forced walkouts. They, the lots really don't lend themselves to a walkout, but people want that walkout so bad that they force it. With it comes a lot of problems, one of them being drainage issues. And then you're usually throwing all kinds of money at that to get it right. So here the guys are, I mean, the days, the days are long, and again, you know, you can't, like Francisco, he's got to focus. He's got to stay focused. You're working right near the house. This little mini excavator, this, this small Kubota, it has zero tail, so he can't end up swinging the machine and hitting the house. The older machines, they have a lot of tail. It's hanging over, and you got to be careful. So if you rent a machine and you're not familiar with it, if you're going to rent a machine, I highly advise you call around and ask for one that has what we consider a zero tail. Whether it it pretty much goes only as far as the tracks when the tracks are out. He does have the tracks in, and honestly, if he wanted, he could spread these tracks out a little bit for a better stance where he's at now. But I understand he's just moving back and forth, back and forth, taking taking it down in tiers. You know, it's, this is the first part. We had to pull boulder walls apart. Uh, we had to disassemble a paver patio and after this is all done the pavers weren't going to go back so we hauled all that away so it's it's a really big job it's a really big job and and we like these jobs we don't mind them but it's a lot of work if you're going to fix footer tile around the house it's going to be a big job i recommend fixing footer tile on the outside of the house opposed to breaking up the floor i really i'm not a fan of that I'm not a fan of breaking up my basement floor and putting in some sort of system because I've never seen one that I liked. You have the water actually running into the interior of the basement and you're collecting it that way. So it's always musty smelling. It never works out. I've never seen a job that, like I said, like I wouldn't do it to my house, period. So I would take care of it externally no matter what. And that's that. So here's those 86 pound blocks. And you can see the fiberglass pins. This is some serious stuff. When I say they make bridges out of this, I'm not kidding you. They make bridges out of this. This is the only block Scott and I will use. You can see the guys have been slinging these 86 pound blocks, putting the fiberglass pins that tie them together in the block. And they're gonna fill all those voids. Every single one of these blocks gets filled with drainage stone and behind them as well. Scott and I, we've been through a lot. We want to make sure that we never have to get a call saying this wall is leaning, that the forces that were put on this wall were causing it to fail. I've never, ever had a call back using the Keystone. This is their straight compact, and I just love it. So we'll catch you on the part two. This is a big project. We'll be getting back to you in a couple weeks. All right, welcome to how to elevate your grade around your house for better drainage part two. We've done cheater patios, pit patios. When you have a cheater walkout, a cheater walkout is when the, the lot is not you know, lending itself to a walkout, but you want it so bad you force it. So you hear these terms in the industry, the construction world, uh, you know, forced walkout, uh, a cheater, a, a cheater patio. So these boulders were all built up so that there could be a walkout for this home. And there's daylight windows. The brick veneer on the back of the house was never meant to be built up on. 20 years ago, a landscaper put dirt up against there because they were trying to elevate the grade around and it worked. It's just there's a surcharge. There's a surcharge and when the soil's wet with hydrostatic pressures, you don't want to have a failure on that back wall. It doesn't matter if it's brick. If it's aluminum siding, 
vinyl siding or brick veneer, the construction behind that wall is all the same. What we're doing is we're taking all that stress off this home and we're building this retaining wall. This is the retaining wall material that Scott and I endorse and we love the most. It's Keystone. Here in Michigan, Fent is the distributor. It's 86 pounds, 86 pounds a block. And then you fiberglass pin it together. So here in the north, if there's some movement, it's fine. So we put so much stone behind this wall and we put our high octane down below the footer. And now we're, you've got our burrito wrap. We're putting all the stone in. And we went ahead and put our four ounce fabric over top of all the stone that we put behind the wall and we put a layer of topsoil down so we can grow sod. See the high octane? All right, I'm gonna take you right now to see some water in this system working. I wanna show you what the high octane can do. I wanted to show you this working during a thunderstorm. This was a thunderstorm. This is high octane. This is how high octane moves water from your backyard from your outdoor living space. We have a half horse Liberty in there, and this is a 100 gallon basin. This is one of our basins that we have uh, in our online store for you guys. You keep asking for it, so we put it there, but it's a one piece, which is fantastic. We love it. We slip it in the ground, and with those rubber grommets, you don't lose any of your dirt or stone into the basin. Now I just wanted to show you when this discharges 50 gallons of water what it looks like. It's rare to catch one of our systems in a torrential rain. A real This was a really good thunderstorm. I was in the right place at the right time. Everybody's always asking to see the systems work. So the job wasn't entirely done. The hard, the hard plumbing that's going to go to the lake, that wasn't done yet. And our electrician hadn't been out yet to do the final, you know, we want to have this on its own circuit. So that's why you see an extension cord. We don't do things like that. You know better. This system was almost complete. We just had some detail left. And this is it. It got tested, and it got tested early. It wasn't in long. But look at how much water. Now you can see that Liberty pump at the bottom, the cast iron Liberty pump just disappears. The water fills up so fast. Those rubber seals, no dirt, no dirt's coming in between the pipe and the basin where we use the hole saw. That's what's, what's really nice about those rubber grommets. That's why you see us using those. So this is a really, really hard rain. I and mean, this is a really good test you know, here's another 50 gallons. Look how fast it filled that basin halfway up. That's a two inch, two inch discharge for everybody. I know you guys like to have all the details. Reason why that water is a bit dirty, we didn't get the sod down yet. Again, we nearly had this job complete. I'm going to show you this job from beginning to end. So you have that to look forward to. But meanwhile, since I had this footage, I wanted to slip it in here and show you this system working. It's moving a lot of water, and I wanted to show you how important it is to use those rubber grommets.
you can see that they're running the 36 inch auger so that we can get that basin in I recommend a 48 inch basin for DIYers anything deeper than that is really really hard to pull off we put that fabric down and we put topsoil over it there was a bunch of drainage stone underneath it you've seen in that footage how how well that works the water just runs through all the stone that we put into our jobs I always tell you guys remove a lot of the heavy soil remove a lot of the clay and replace it with stone and you've seen in that footage with all that water that the high octane was the high octane has the biggest inlets the eight slot yellow you guys you guys think oh this is just a color oh it's blue instead of yellow no the high octane has 17 and a quarter inches square of inlet per linear foot and you've seen the kind of water it moved in that video got lucky and before this job was complete happened to be on site and a storm rolled in and you guys always ask me to show you our systems working in the rain so I stood out in the rain even though my mom raised me to get in out of the rain not stay in the rain like that I was soaked to the bone for you guys but you guys want to see that water moving so these guys are working slowly you know to get this auger to the depth that they need to get one of those rib basins in the ground instead of the house having problems with the water getting into the walkout basement because think about it that lower level of that patio water would just go right into that door if it filled up with water and the guys are putting in so much stone that's what we we try to tell everybody you have to put in a lot of stone to have a really good drain now we have this high octane below the footer and we have it down in this lower level patio you've seen in that video this high octane working I mean that is moving some water when you have those big inlets you're gonna move a lot of water I gotta give this crew a shout out for just working smarter instead of working harder the way they put the plywood there so that they can just have the stone slide into the trench you know just anything to cut down on labor anything because what we do is not easy you DIYers know ditching is is a lot of work we end up doing a lot of jobs that homeowners started and they decided that they did not want no part of that clay after a day or two so my guys from just years and years of doing this they got so many different techniques and methods and uh, here's one maybe you guys can use I really really encourage DIYers to rent a mini skid loader we do like the ditch which they're the most productive and you know an excavator as well so this is a pretty big project for a DIYer